and hello YouTube, this is GS Man, Smart and in a brand new video for Tutorials with GS. And today's tutorial, we're taking a look at Photoshop and how to create a cool, easy, but very nice looking text effect. I like to call it a rays of lights exploding on the text. I don't really know what to name this video even because it's such a unique effect. It also takes advantage of an old filter that not many people use anymore, but for this purpose, it's very good to use and it really gets the job done. So we're basically going to create some text with uh, rays of light coming from behind the text that makes it look like uh, it's slowly zooming into the text. In fact, the radio blur method we're going to be using is called zoom. So you should have seen the finished product on the thumbnail image. And all I've pretty much done here so far is created a new canvas here with uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, by clicking file new. And I just created uh, this new canvas here with a black background. So from here on, just go ahead and grab your type tool here. And when you're doing this, you want to have a large text size and a bulky font. So I'm going to go ahead and type tutorials. So with a bulkier font, the uh, effect will look a lot better. And um, obviously we want to have it large so that we can scale it down if we need it, because scaling down is always better than scaling up. So. One thing you also want to be aware of is that don't make it too large so that it's near the edges here because the radial blur effect will basically uh, cause the blur to go out of the canvas here and we don't want it to have we don't, we don't want our effect to be cut off. So perhaps scaling it down to 300 even would be better. And I got that stupid error. Scaling down to 300 wouldn't be too bad because at least then your effect won't be cut off from the sides. So after you've done that, we're going to go ahead and right click the text layer here on the right side. And we're going to add some blending options here, blending options. And the first thing we're going to add is a gradient blur. Well, not a gradient blur, just a regular gradient. So not that, this gradient overlay. And uh, go ahead and change the gradient here. Just click that down arrow and we're going to pick the third one here black white and change the black color to any color you want uh, I'm gonna pick a dark color we're gonna go ahead and pick a red sort of a dark red like that and then for our white we're gonna pick a bright red like so press ok and press ok we're also gonna add a bevel and emboss right here and for the depth here, the larger your text is, the more depth you want to have. I think going 300, maybe 400, 500, maybe a bit too much. Going 350, I think, will do just fine. And the size of this, we can change this to 10, maybe 6, 7, 8, 9. I think 8's good. Several settings you can play around with here. But I think I'm just going to stick with that and changing the opacity here to perhaps a 70. 70 is always a nice value to pick. So 70 and 70 for both of those. And that's pretty much all we're going to add. You could add a stroke, but uh, it it's kind of defeats the purpose of adding a bevel and emboss because we get this nice depth here. So I'm not going to add a stroke. We're going to press OK. And that's what we have so far. After that, what we're going to do is duplicate this layer three times. So control J once, twice, and three times. And go ahead and select your duplicates. Hold down control and only select your duplicates. Do not select the original text layer because if you select the original text layer, when you add the effect, you won't be able to read your text. So make sure the original is not selected. Once you have three of these selected, go ahead and change the uh, layer mode to dissolve right here. Then right click. Click Rasterize Type after you've right clicked one of the layers. And after that, right click one of the layers again and click Merge Layers. Now, it may seem kind of pointless what we just did there because all we basically did is rasterize three layers and merge them down into one layer again. But you'll notice if you do this method, if you do this effect on text with a different amount of multiple layers, you'll see that the smaller amount of layers you have, if you only did it with one or two, you'll get a smaller effective effect. While the more layers you've duplicated, the better the effect will look. 
So we did do that for a purpose. And three I found to be very good. So I've used three duplicates and I have one original here. And we have a background layer. So you should have uh, three layers here. After that, we're going to add our radial blur effect. Don't add it to the original, but add it to the uh, rasterized and merged down triple layers. So go up to filter, blur, radial blur. And now here, make sure you have best quality selected and zoom selected. The amount of zoom is sort of up to your preference. I found that the the larger your text is in width, the more zoom is better. But the uh, well, the larger your text is in width, the less zoom is better. Not a hundred, basically, and the, and the uh, smaller your text is in width, the uh, more zoom is better. So I don't think we're gonna use a, I don't think we're gonna use a hundred. I think we're gonna use something like ninety, perhaps. And let's see how that looks. You could use a hundred. You'll just get more of the zoom effect, but I think 90 will look good. Here's how 100 look, and you notice that um, on the on the right side, it sort of covers our letter too much. So that's why I'm picking 90. And if you have text that's longer than this, you'll see that the more out you go to the right and to the left, the more profound these blurs will be. So that's why I generally go with a smaller value for uh, wider text. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with 90. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and change the layer mode up here once again to linear dodge add. And that'll sort of make our text come through a bit more so we can see it and read it. Now what you can do if you want, you can go up to filters again and repeat the same effect, blur, radial blur, and just press okay with the same settings. And that'll give you an extra radial blur on top of the, uh, the layer mode that we just did, which is fine. And lastly, another optional thing you can do, which I recommend you do, is duplicate this layer maybe once or twice so you get that real nice uh, zoom effect of, of the rays coming through the text, actually. But don't duplicate it too many times because it'll start looking weird. So perhaps duplicating once, maybe, if your text is a little darker, maybe duplicating it twice. I only duplicated it once here. And I'd say that looks pretty cool. And as you see, uh, this is why we made our canvas size a little bigger and our text a little smaller, because if we would have had this very large, the text would have been up to here and the effect would have went off of the canvas here and we don't want that. So if you want to add a background, you can add a background. Uh, the black was here only so we could see the effect a little better. But if you're done here, you can just basically get rid of the background and here's your render. And you can merge this down and export it and use it in some of your designs or templates, whatnot. And I think it's a really cool effect. It's really nice and with a very simple uh, filter as well. So that's pretty much the tutorial. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like. Any questions or comments, you can leave a uh, comment in the comment box below. Any suggestions to make this even cooler would be great to hear. And plenty of other content on the channel about Photoshop tutorials. If you don't have Photoshop, we have GIMP tutorials as well. Plenty of other software tutorials as well. So I encourage you to subscribe. And uh, that's pretty much for this video. Thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how-to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out and if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too, really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Man Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.